Here's the, the dish by Brown, and here's the shot made by Williams. And look at the words already. Williams. A few moments later. Williams defends Butler. A bump, the grind, the gyration. Ensuing play. And let's put his head down against Grant Williams and got all the way to the cup. <laughs> Butler drives on Grant Williams and a 15-footer will tie. Absolutely going at Grant Williams. Once it Grant Williams on him. The Celtics are going to have to just pick up a second personal foul. And that's clearly a foul. The Celtics complaining. <laughs> Jimmy, before you got up here, we've been talking about Grant Williams. Can you tell us what happened in, in the moment there, and did it fuel you down the stretch? Yes, it did, and um, it makes me smile. It, it does. When when people talk to me, I'm like, okay, I know I'm I'm a decent player. If you want to talk to me, out of everybody that you can talk to, but um, um I just don't know if um I'm the best person to talk to. <laughs> Damn. That's a stone-cold killer right there. I mean, right after the 637 mark, Jimmy racked up nine straight points on Williams' head, and because of his foul mouth, the Celtics lost that important must-win game. History books already tell us that. If you mess with Jimmy Buckets, it ain't gonna turn out pretty. But for some reason, some guys out there, you know, whether it's the player or the media, they still continue to disrespect the guy to this very day. I mean, I don't know why they keep doing it, but one thing's for sure, trash-talking that dog is never gonna be a good idea. Now, Grant Williams wasn't the only one who fell into this trap. See, back in game one, his old pal Al Horford tried to poke the bear, which went a little something like this. I see here in South Beach, remember this in game one, Al Horford knocks down a three. It's pretty understandable why Horford did what he did. I mean, they had a huge run at that time, and they were also up by eight, with around four minutes left in the second quarter. So yeah, it's cool. However, Horford's Ultraman antics caught the eye of Jimmy, and uh, he responded by taking over the fourth quarter to show the old head how it's done. Jimmy Butler scuffling his way into the paint over White. White plays. Benson a screen switch. Brogdon was the. Rebound chased, 36-year-old Al Horford got me. Butler with Brogdon on him, it's a long three, and <laughs> Jimmy ended the night with 35 points, 7 assists, and 6 steals to lead the Heat in a comeback win in Game 1. Now his personal revenge tour didn't end there, because in Game 3, Jimmy kept the receipt, and when the right opportunity came by, he returned the favor by trolling him really hard. With the timeout sign, Gabe Vincent knocking down. Jimmy Butler moonwalks back to half court. What does he do? Takes the knee. Man, Jimmy just did the old guy dirty right there. Anyway, the glaring disrespect given to Jimmy and his teammates this season has been really obvious. So much so that the media and some analysts already counted them out even before the regular season began, despite the fact that they just went to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. See, because of the false narratives they built around the Heat in the past offseason, the odd makers were forced to label them as plus 1400 underdogs to win the chip this season. Now, as the season rolled on, we all know that the Heat struggled and ran into a bit of trouble along the way before climbing their way out of the play-in tournament and eventually getting into the playoffs as the eighth seed. Now, at that point, the naysayers began to disrespect the Heat once again by telling them that they only had a 1.6% chance of making the finals this year. I mean, the disrespect is so real against these guys that they did the same mistake back in 2020 when they counted out the Heat in the bubble. And if we're going to crunch the numbers even further, they've given the current Heat team the biggest underdog odds to win the championship at the start of any playoffs in the last 30 years. Anyways, the Heat responded to these ridiculous projections by beating every single team that stood in their path in this season's playoffs, and despite the odds being literally stacked against them, they proved their critics wrong by having two of the biggest upset wins in the 1988 playoffs, which came at the expense of the Bucks in the first round and more recently against the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, even if they already knew that playoff Jimmy would show up on the big stage, they still keep disrespecting him and his crew time and time again. But after their strong run this year, man, I'm pretty sure that they'll stop disrespecting Jimmy's name once and for all. For now, let's put away the numbers and get back to some real action. As you saw in that clip, Butler didn't really do much, and it was actually Nene who started everything by shoving him first. 
Now, this happened back in 2014, and uh, Nene probably thought the playoff Jimmy wasn't born yet at that time. But boy oh boy, the man wearing the big dreads got it all wrong. Because during the most crucial stretch of the game, playoff Jimmy introduced himself to the world when he did this. He gets it to Noah. Butler has it. He'll take the three and hit. Jimmy Butler gives Chicago the lead. 24 to go. Is that the guy? Jimmy Butler. To be recovered by Chicago. Butler makes. Instead of having a comfortable 3 0 lead, the Wizards lost the game thanks to Jimmy Bucket's late game heroics. And uh, we all know that this wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Nene's friendly little nudge. Anyways, after that incident, Jimmy slowly gained a reputation for seeking revenge on those who wronged him. But in spite of this, there are still some players who choose to ignore all the warning signs, like Dante Cunningham. We all know that picking a fight with Jimmy is like asking for a death wish. I mean, it was such a boneheaded move on Cunningham's part that the Bulls announcer already knew what was about to come. Tell you what, I mess with Jimmy Butler. He didn't He's about that life. <laughs> Don't mess with him. He will go at you. And on cue, that's exactly what Jimmy did the next time he met Dante on the court. Up, got through traffic. Yeah. Lead pass, Butler. And another foul on Holiday. Jimmy to Jimmy. Fade away. Bulls. The trailer, Butler. Come on. Butler against Hill. Fade away. Butler single-handedly destroyed the Pelicans on their home floor in the next game by dropping 25 points in the first 24 minutes of play. And in the second half, Jimmy let Cunningham know that the Jimmy Butler party is just getting started. Driving hard. Carter Williams back out. Butler's all alone. on fire. Seven-point game. Jimmy running in. Goodness. He is on the baseline, John. Butler turned up the heat in the second half and finished the game with 39 points on 14 of 26 shooting. And after that game, it was safe to assume that Cunningham never crossed paths with Jimmy Buckets ever again. But that said, what's been the most impressive part of Jimmy's game over the years? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video on Jimmy Butler getting disrespected, then you're going to love this next one, where he completely exposes the media. If you guys want to see that video, be sure to click this next one on your screen. Go ahead and click it. It's free.